Welcome, welcome, Be Holy, Be Perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. We are still in the book of Col in the Epistle of Colossians, and we want to know what the Word of the Lord is saying to us. See, let's not read it or study it as it was something for someone else. Let's read it and study it as if we are sitting in the presence of the Most High where he's given us instructions on how to live, on how to serve him, on how to be a good and faithful servant of the Most High God, of the Father, of his Son, Yeshua. Let us understand that the whole the whole uh, epistle of Colossians is really centered around to and be to be in filled with the knowledge of God, to be in filled with the knowledge of God for the purpose of living a blameless, holy life for God. And we do that by what? By being filled with the Holy Spirit, being led, being guided, being taught by the Holy Spirit. So therefore, we need to be taught and guided and led uh, by spirit-filled men that are full gospel, spirit-filled women that are full gospel, that teach the full gospel, that teach the entire word of God. See, we get hung up on certain things, and I don't want to go into that, but I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself to stick to the word of God, to understand the word of God, and to live as God has created us to live according to his word, according to his purpose. So in order for me and you to do that, we have to be what? Filled with the knowledge of God, with the knowledge of God and his purpose. We must be filled with the knowledge of God and his purpose. So we start again. And uh, Colossians 1, chapter 9 and 10, he said, for this reason, since the day we heard about it, heard about what? Heard about their faith, their, their love, and, and of God. We have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled, filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom, with insight into his purpose, and an understanding of spiritual things. See, they are praying for specifics. They are praying for the growth. They are praying for um, the saints to uh, grow in Christ, to grow in the word and the knowledge of God and in the purpose of God that they may live by it so that you walk in a manner worthy of the, worthy of who? Worthy, worthy of the Lord, displaying admirable character, in other words, godly character, moral courage, and personal integrity mm -hmm. to fully please him, him who God in all things burn fruit in every good work and steadily growing in the knowledge of God with deep faith, clear insight, and fragrant love for his precepts, for his laws, for his laws, for his statutes, for his ordinance, for his word. That is what Colossians is all about. So let's not get distracted by a couple of verses where he began to talk about high holy days, the Sabbath, and all that, uh, because we will definitely get off on the wrong, uh, catching the wrong train by doing that. He wants us to grow, and that's what this is about, that we have deeper faith and clear insight clear insight and favorite, favorite love for the saints. See, this is, and for God, see, we have to fear God. We have to reverence God. We have to know what his purpose is. We have to know what his will is. So if we are ministers, then our prayer should, see, this is what happens when we don't have disciples. See, when we don't have disciples, we don't pray for them. When we have like a congregation, we pray for the congregation. Even though we may pray for the congregation, it may be, Lord, just give us peace and unity and love in the congregation. But that is not telling God that you want them to grow. That is not telling them that they need to be filled with the, his love and his peace and his wisdom and his understanding so that they can serve him. See? 
we need to be pacific. Paul is pacific here. We need to be pacific. And that is what is going on. That's what's going wrong. And we need to get it right. People need to repent. We think that people can live any kind of way. Tell them that it's a process, but it's a process that includes repentance. Yes, repentance. It includes repentance in the process. Verses 11, verse 11. We pray that you may be strengthened and invigorated with all power. What? Not power. Yes, power power according to his glorious might to obtain every kind of endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the father who has qualified uh oh back up stop pull the chain stop the train what he say who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of of who unbelievers no of who saints the faithful God's people in the what? In the light. In the light of what? In Christ. Christ is what? I am the what? The light of the world. And so they are talking about Christ when they capitalize this. They are saying in Christ. Christ is the anointed. The anointed uh, one is the one that is a revelator, that brings light, that brings revelation. So the word of God is what? A lamp unto our feet and what? A light unto our path. So what do we need to do? We need to be strengthened and invigorated with all power. All power. The power of sanctification, the power of love, the power of holiness, the power of perfection, the power of being perfect, being mature, growing up in the kingdom of God, we need to be empowered according to his glorious might to obtain every kind of endurance and patience with joy. See, we have to endure. We have to endure, but how do we endure? We cannot endure Without the power of God. We cannot endure without the power of God. We cannot endure without the love of God. See, we get all hung up on abundant life. What is abundant life? You know, and that what does that have to do with this? Because we're talking about life in Christ Jesus. Abundant life is life in Christ Jesus. It's not wrapped up in material gain. Okay? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Verse 13, for he has rescued us and has drawn up to himself, drawn up to himself from the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Let's stop. For he has rescued us and has drawn us up, drawn us into himself from the, from the dominion of darkness. So that means that we're not under the, the, the dominion of darkness. And if we're not under the dominion of darkness, that means the dominion of sin and death, the law of sin and death. Then why do we still live like we are under dominion, the dominion of darkness? See, this is a question. This is what we need to be answering. Why are we still living under the dominion of darkness when he has what? He has rescued us and drawn us to himself. And there is no sin in Christ. Somebody ought to get this. There is no sin in Christ. And he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. What does that mean? That means he has transferred us from under the authority of the dominion of darkness of the prince of this world and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son under the authority and leadership of Jesus Yeshua. In him, we have redemption. What is redemption? Redemption is deliverance. Redemption is salvation because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of the sin penalty. See, this is where we get tripped up, tripped up about 
<laughs> all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Yep, that's what Paul say, but he don't say that we stay, that we stay in that condition. He say, and the cancellation of the sin penalty. That cancellation comes when we repent. He did it, but he gave us access to it. That means that he opened the door. He opened the door, but that don't mean that we can keep on sinning and the sin is penalty is canceled. Is canceled. No, it don't work like that. We have to fall up under what? Under the lordship, the lordship, under the kingdom rule. See, we want to play these games and try to confuse people and tell them that we live under grace. Well, we can't even live under grace without following the rules of God. We have to repent. We have to get in the covenant. <laughs> you can't live outside the covenant and think you're serving God. You know, that, that's just it. But anyway, let's move on. Verse 15, verse 15. He says, he is the exalt, he is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, the, the visible representation of the invisible, the visible representation of the invisible, the firstborn, the preeminent one, the sovereign and the originator of all creation. Boom. That's it. That it, it, it. He can't get any plainer than that. He cannot get any plainer than that. And and then what what and why is he telling them this? Why is he telling the Colossians? Why is he telling them this? Because we have to be conformed to what? The image of Christ. Why? Because that's why he was manifested. Hello. He was manifested so that we would know what it looks like to be conformed to the image of God, to be reconciled to God. See? See? For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominion or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him. This is by his activity and for him. See, it is just plain. So plain and so simple. If we are in Christ, if we are walking under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, if we are walking under the rulership of the kingdom of God, the government of God, then we are in Christ. But if we rebel, we are rebellious, we are transgressors, we have created a crime scene, we are criminals. We are criminals outlaws in the kingdom of God. Now, people don't want to hear this. They don't want to teach uh us this because why because they feel that we will be offended they don't care if we die and go to hell and we live our life thinking that we're going to heaven and we're not because why we're outlaws criminals in the kingdom of God and no one want to tell people this and why that's because they are hurling they looking for your money they not looking after your soul they are not nurturing you they are not nurturing your souls they are not being good spiritual stewards or mentors over you because if a person would not tell you the truth about yourself, they are not a person that love you. Okay? That is just pure and simple. If a person see you walking out in front of a Mack truck and not try to stop you, that person do not love you. Get it? How simple can it be? How simple can it be? But we're not going to argue that point because if we go to God and ask the Lord to show us what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, what we should be listening to, whom we should be listening to, then we will get it. But before, you know, we got to repent. We got to go through the process of repentance because if you're not sorry for your sins, you're not going to ask God for forgiveness. And if you don't ask God for forgiveness, you are an outlaw. I don't care what anybody say. Grace for it. Grace to make you be an outlaw. Get out of here. Anyway, first for in Colossians 1 17, and he himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
He is the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. He controls uh, Venus, Mars, all the planets, everything he controls them. He holds them in order. He is God. And he is also the head, the life source, and the leader of the body. What body? His body, the ecclesia, the, the church, the assembly, your body, your mind, your spirit. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the what? From the dead. So that he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and preeminent in what? In all things, everything, so be it. He is God. That's just how it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. We cannot pretend that God has not given us, given us the power to control ourselves. See, we want to pretend that we can't help it. If we are so uh, bound by something or controlled by something that we can't help it, then we need to go somewhere and get help. See, maybe it's the lunatic that, that the Lord had to come and tell his disciple, look, you didn't get it. You have not been praying and fasting, so you can't deliver this man, this child from this demon. So maybe it's not just, oh, Lord, help us. We think that Jesus came to make us uh, free to sin. No, he came to deliver us from the powers of darkness. Why? Because God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good and delivering and delivering all those who were oppressed by the who? By the devil. Now that is just simple. 90% of Jesus' ministry was delivering people from demons. And if we go back to the beginning we will see that it was a part of the uh, conversion to go through some type of deliverance before you could be fully instated into the body of Christ. But we don't teach that because people are so un in so much unbelief and have no knowledge of who God is and who the enemy of God is that they get all uh, scared and that we don't believe in demons, we don't believe in that. Well, you don't believe in the word of God because from the beginning to the ending, he is talking about sorcerers, demons, people that follow the doctrines of demons, idol. What do you think idol worship is? Oh my God. But Anyway, the whole topic here is to be filled with the knowledge of God. And when we are filled with the knowledge of God, we will know the difference between the lie and the truth. We will know the difference between what is of God and what is not of God. Why? Because we are filled with the knowledge of God. See, this is why it's so important that we are being taught by someone who is anointed. That somebody that God has qualified. See, I mean, that's just like going to a doctor and he's supposed to be there. He's supposed to be there for, uh, uh, he's a kidney doctor. And you go into, you go into a guy that work on your feet. Do you think that he's going to help you with your kidney? No, he's not qualified. Okay. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Lord, help us to understand. Help us, Lord God, to grow in the knowledge of you. Lord, I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Give us the knowledge and understanding that we need to serve you in spirit and in truth, in holiness and in maturity. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord God, Fill the listeners with the full knowledge of you, Lord, that they may grow and that they may produce fruit in you, that they may walk worthy of you, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.